One of the little things that I remind myself of all the time, stop talking. I think I've spent a lot of my life feeling like I got to participate in every conversation. I got to have an opinion on everything. I got to make sure I get in the last word, whether it's at work or family in particular. And when you stop talking, a whole different world opens up to you. It's kind of hard to do if you're somebody who is used to asking questions and having an opinion. But try this. Go into work or into class this week and be quiet. Don't say anything. And notice how different everything is. Or when you're having dinner with your family. Be quiet. Ask questions if you want. But stop talking. There are two ways stop talking has made a big difference in my life. The first is in helping me grow. Because when you're the one talking, you're not learning anything. It's when you're listening or when you're reading or when you're taking a class, when that input is coming in, that's when you learn and grow. I remember a couple years ago, I was talking to a friend of mine, and this was back when my career was really about motivational speaking. And I was saying, you know, I feel really burnt out. I feel like I just am stale. I'm not getting any better at this craft. I, I, I'm not feeling like I'm growing. Something's up. I don't know what it is. And my friend said to me, well, I know exactly what you're talking about because I felt that way too. And then I decided to stop talking. And I said, what do you mean you decided to stop talking? You're still getting paid to do speeches. And he said, no, no, no. I, I decided that I would stop talking so much. And I would prioritize, instead of standing on that stage talking, I would make sure that at least 10 times a year, I found myself sitting in the audience listening. And that really struck me because I realized in that moment, my whole life was about output, speaking, creating, doing all the stuff. And I wasn't getting the input I needed. And so one immediate change that I made after that conversation was... I signed up to go to two events where I could sit in an audience. Another one is I dedicated time every week to just input, reading a book, watching someone else on stage who's masterful and learning from them, taking an online course on a topic that I was interested in. All that input helped me grow. And you're not growing when you're talking. You grow and learn when you're listening. And the second way that this made a huge difference in my life is it taught me that you don't always need to have the last word. It's amazing how often you'll find that you offer an opinion just because you think you should. It's amazing how often you can get pulled into these conversations where it's just one person and then the other trying to get the last word in. The truth is not everything deserves a response. Not everyone deserves an explanation. Stop talking. Not every conversation is one that you need to participate in. Stop talking and start practicing being quiet and not having an opinion. Oftentimes, protecting your peace and not getting involved and just listen, don't talk, is going to make you happier. And one other thing, if you're in a conversation with somebody and it's argumentative or it's tense, stop talking. I'm not talking silent treatment stuff here. I just stop talking, lower your voice when you do. It signals that you're in control. So stop talking and you're going to get your awareness, your confidence, and a whole different world is going to open up to you. Sometimes silence is way more powerful than chiming in and your peace is worth protecting. So stop talking. All right, that brings me to number six. I love, love, love this one. And if you struggle with ADHD or clutter, you're gonna love this too. Number six, put things back where they belong. This little change, just tiny change has made a huge difference in clutter and organization for me that when you find something, put it where it belongs. It just takes less than a minute to do the right thing. And then you are one item at a time, not allowing clutter to build up. I do this every single day in almost every room that I walk in. If I see something that is out of place, I 
put it where it belongs. And if you adopt this little change, you see something, it's out of place, put it where it belongs, you will be shocked at how much more organized your house is. In fact, I'll tell you a story about something that happened today. So the Vermont studios are above my garage. And today we were working on this awesome episode about owls. And I had all of these like objects and things that I was using to show in the YouTube video. And when we were done with the taping, there was a pile of stuff up here that all belonged in different places. You know what the old me would have done before this rule? I probably would have left it up here. And then it would become not a little pile, but a gigantic volcano of things that started piling up that did not belong here. So instead, I kind of use this rule, just touch it once. I loaded all of the little objects into a big bowl, and then I brought it into the kitchen, which is where one of the items belonged. That's all I needed to do. Check. I put the bowl where it belonged. 30 minutes later, I was done with lunch, and I was walking back through the kitchen. Now, inside the bowl was a pair of swim trunks and a little owl statue. I know you're thinking, what was she doing? Uh, doesn't matter. These were objects that belong in my bedroom. Now, I could have just as easily walked right past them and gone right on up above the garage to get back to work, but I have this rule. If you see something out of place, put it where it belongs. So I scooped those things up. It took me 30 seconds to walk to the bedroom. I put it down, boom done. And when I got into the bedroom, you know what I saw? I saw a shirt that was on top of my bed. And the shirt was there because I couldn't find my eye mask last night because somebody didn't put it where it belongs. I have no idea where it is. And so last night I used a t-shirt as an eye mask. And so when I woke up, I made the bed. And if you've ever used a t-shirt as an eye mask to block the light while you sleep, what happens? the t-shirt actually rolls off your face in the middle of the night and gets trapped underneath the pillows. And so I made the bed, but I didn't find the t-shirt. I came back in and the t-shirt was on top of the bed. I don't know if Chris put there. I don't know why it was there. The old me would have taken that t-shirt and tucked it under the pillows. Does it belong there? No, it belongs in the closet. So a uh, simple change. You see something out of place, put it where it belongs. Picked it up, fold it, rolled it, tucked it in the drawer, 10 seconds later, boom. I love that. Don't put things back where you found them because that would have meant tucking that thing under the pillowcase. Put things where they belong. It takes 30 seconds. It'll make you feel so much more organized and on top of it, it is an incredibly little change that makes an enormous difference. And I bet as you're listening, whether you're sitting in your car or even walking or you're at home, if you look around, there is something around you that does not belong in the room that you're in. Put it where it belongs when we're done with this episode. That brings me to the seventh little change that makes a surprisingly big difference. Wait a week. If you're the kind of person who's impulsive with your money, like I used to be, wait a week. And the principle here is this. Wait a week means you're giving yourself a cooling off period. Because the truth is, you're always going to be excited by the idea of buying something that you don't need and that you don't have the money for. I mean, right? You'd be like staring at this thing, this new pair of shoes, and you're like all excited because, you know, for me, I am a freak about Birkenstocks. And when they come out with the fake shearling Birkenstocks for the fall, I look and they have a different colorway in the spring. I look at those and I'm like, oh my gosh, these are so cool. And I get all excited and I imagine myself in these things and I freaking love Birkenstocks. But the truth is, I don't need them. In fact, I'm wearing a pair right now, but I can just imagine seeing the brand new colors and feeling the excitement and just really wanting it. And you know how good it feels when you go click and you purchase it? Oh my gosh. If you don't need it or you can't afford it, wait a week. And the fact is, if you can't afford to buy it twice, then you can't afford to buy it once. It's kind of another rule of thumb. But the main thing that you and I are struggling with is the shocking amount of useless stuff that we buy on impulse that we don't need. Because I don't know if you've noticed this, but why is every social media platform now a 24 seven online shopping network? Like there is so much stuff in your face to buy 
that this wait a week thing, holy cow, has it saved me from so many shop now, tap click, let's go purchases. So if you see something that you want and it's more than a hundred bucks, wait a week. This is genius because you're not saying, I don't need that. I can't afford that. You're not shaming yourself. What you're doing is you're being smart. When you say, wait a week, you are rising above your emotions and you're not allowing your excitement and the thrill of the buying and the distraction and the immediate gratification to lead you to doing something that you either can't afford or that you don't need or that's just dumb. You work hard for your money. Why be stupid with it? I'll tell you what, wait a week, little change, surprisingly huge difference. And I wish I could pull up my Amazon shopping cart right now because it is full of things that I've gone, boop, put in cart, but I'm gonna wait a week. They've been sitting there for months. Because once the initial, oh, I need that thing that just popped up, is gone, you realize you don't need it, or you don't want it, or you can't afford it, or that you're not that stupid to waste your money that you've been working really hard to make on something dumb like that. And it's going to save you money. It's going to make you smarter, and it's going to help you rise above the emotion and the algorithm and the way that this stuff is in your face all day. Wait a week, and I promise you, you will see a big difference. I have nine simple changes that I'm gonna share with you today that are gonna make a surprisingly big difference in your life. They're super easy to remember. It's almost like these are little life hacks that sit on top of the latest and most amazing research on how you can improve various aspects of your life. And I guarantee you, you'll be able to do most of them today. 